Wednesday, another attempt at live streaming. Today we did a bunch of upgrades. Uh, first of all, Blake's here. You can probably see him on the reflection. Uh, Blake is an integral part of these live streams. And so thank him in the chat. <laughs> uh, we're here, we got a, a network cable, so the Wi-Fi is not gonna drop us again like it did a bunch of times. And um, I think this is the most popular stream so far. We got like 30 people waiting while the other ones peaked at 30 people watching. So uh, I, I feel we got on just something here. Everybody wants to buy lenses, I guess. Um, the only downside is 32 people waiting, but only 12 likes. So let's crank that up, please. If you don't know, I'm Chitu Fahadangs, and all I talk about in this channel is anamorphic shooting. So subscribe before it's too late. Uh, the live streams will continue and the videos will continue and there's even more coming. By the way, uh, if you're here for some Siri secrets, uh, guess what lens I'm using to shoot this. Hmm. Anyway. Let me see what else do I got to address. Oh yeah, we incorporated the vignetting into the shot. That's a new thing that we're trying. Uh, <laughs> just a new stylistic choice. You know how lens flares draw attention to the equipment? The vignetting is drawing attention to the limitations of the equipment. And just catch up on this chat here. Uh, I got people saying they're buying all of eBay and... Um, there's a little bit of concern before we go into the stream uh, of people saying that I'm bumping up prices for lenses or favoring certain sellers over others. Um, I've been looking through eBay for years now looking for anamorphics. It's not the only place that you can get good deals. It's getting harder and harder to find a good deal on eBay. And we have seen a spike in prices from when I started. So basically it goes to say that more information allows people to value their products differently. What I want to focus on is avoiding finding scams or like telltale signs of scams, AKA red flags and the main issues with buying on eBay. So we might run into deals here, hopefully uh, some useful stuff will show up. But uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you can learn to avoid trouble when buying a lens on eBay. And that's invaluable and that's definitely not talked about enough. So this is what we're going to go for. Um, let's see what's going on. People are asking about a bunch of lenses. Uh, Ian Frank and Jasper and Ariana and the Weekly Online. We are all going to go into this journey. So um, if you got any questions before we start, this is the time. Otherwise, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Lucas, how's it going in LA? Weather here was pretty good, but now nah, not so much. So here we are. Look, I'm in the corner of the screen. This is my initial screen on eBay. When I open eBay and I go into my saved searches, this is what shows up. And at one time, this used to be very interesting, but right now it's a bunch of random things. I got lots of animal fakes. I got stuff from Roman here. These modified Russian lenses are all anamorphics, but they do show up with the anamorphic keyword, as you can see here. Um, there's a lot of Siri. I'm actually, I'm actually watching this one. Oh, no, get back here. It's not what I want to do. Remove. Oh, look, there's something in my cart. Anyway, going back. Saved searches. So I actually want to watch this Siri here because I'm looking for an MFT version for a project. But yeah, there's a lot of Siri. There's Siri here. There's Siri here. There's more and more. 
Siri, Siri down here, four, and also moment lenses. There's one, two, well, it's an iPhone, it's a phone lens, so four, and we barely started. And the other thing that's wildly common is giant projection lenses. So Lomo and a piece, one, two, uh, three, just on the beginning. So how do we clean this through? Um, if you go on here and you just type anamorphic lens, you'll see something started to happen that is not really, really cool, which is, did they fix it? No, someone realized that anamorphic is a very popular search term. So this person decided to, I don't know if it's one person or multiple people, but there's a lot of Sigma lenses when you just search for anamorphic lens. There's this one, there's a bunch of stuff that also isn't anamorphic at all. A lot of anamorphic shows up here. It's hard to avoid that, but today is a good day. There's almost like no sigmas. Uh, well, just because I said so. Here's another one, uh, another one. So it's a bunch of sigma lenses and I don't want to scroll through Sigma lenses. So what I've started doing is using operators for searches and just removing Sigma from the search app. Absolutely. So adding the minus Sigma will take things out. And uh, now those results are gone. Um, I can filter this further, but for now, let's, let's stick with that. Uh, Got a link here from Ian. Let me see what this is. Let's see what it is. Bolex 16F. Oh God. What is this now? Delete this. What the hell? Nope, it's not going. Not going, guys. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, so we're looking at a Bolex here that Ian was asking about. And wow, 600 bucks. This is a two times scope. And based on the scale of this case here, if we look at it, I would say this is a small scope, much like a Sancor 16C or a, a Koa 16D. And that's my other concern about live streaming about eBay is I'm gonna say things are too expensive and the sellers can get upset at me. So don't take it personal. Your lens is too pricey. 600 bucks for this is no, don't do it. Um, hold on, the chat is really going wild here. Let me catch up for a second. <laughs> Uh, Lucas is asking, what are my thoughts on the Siri 35 mil? I'm helping you get to a conclusion by doing this. We're shooting on the Siri 35 and I have a review coming up as soon as the lens is announced. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you're curious about Siri stuff, subscribe now. There's going to be a lot of content about it. Uh, I know it's a controversial subject because a lot of people are against series like ah series only 1.33 that's so lame siri does what nobody has done in 10 or so 20 years or if you really look back into lomos and his karamas 40 50 years um bringing single focus into a budget package so I find their initiative remarkable. I'm a, I'm a big fan of anyone who's doing anamorphic for everyone. You don't have to be rich to get into this game. Uh, so that's a, a little bit of my thoughts on the Siri. Uh, William's asking, are those random projection lenses from Russia and Ukraine worth looking at? It depends on how much time you have. Um, I have one safe that I'm gonna load up in a little bit. But those are like almost like a project in itself. You have a project to make the lens usable and then you have the projects of shooting with the lens. 
I had an episode about him, about one of those that I was going to like rehouse DIY, but it was just so much time and effort that I, I had to let the lens go. <laughs> so not for me. Hope that helps. Uh, da -da -da -da. Unkit is saying it's a lot of people after a point, actual specific searchers stop at least my experience and then it'll be just the lenses. Uh, yes, you at, at a certain point, people realize that anamorphic is a high value keyword. And if you just use that on your tag, anamorphic shooters are just so full of money. Although this channel goes to prove otherwise, because I'm making zero money here. Uh, speaking of which, sign up for memberships. There's more live streams and more content and more pointers on getting deals whenever I run into them, if I don't run into any. So sign up for memberships. The link is right below the video. There's a bunch of benefits. Check it out. You help me. I help you. This is great. We grow together. Um, but people realize that anamorphic is a high value keyword and they just put it on their listings, although they're listing things that are not anamorphic. Um, not that cool. It really dilutes and adds a lot of time to the search. Um, I'm just quickly looking at this eBay thing. Um, where is that? Mm. I was going to say something, but my point was wrong. So I take it back. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at the results number for Sigma anamorphic lens minus Sigma and with Sigma. And it's really diluted. Like this gives me 870 and the other one gives me 874. So it doesn't really apply right now. Uh, let's see the other one here just to illustrate. So 174. 170. I have a feeling that I can filter this better, but we'll get there. Uh, what else is here? Jasper saw an A key or a Sancor 16C for 300 euros at a local store. That's not a bad price. It's a, it's a small lens, 300 euros. If I'm making the conversion to the Canadian dollar, it's kind of pricey, but it's not a bad price. It's a good scope. You might have to like work on it for a little bit to clean it up and tune it, but it's a good, good, good deal. Uh, let's see here. What else is going on? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. 600 bucks on that scope. So that's a no cat list. Scopes are easy to find, but single focus or variable diopters are very few and far between. Even that anamorphic store guy stopped selling his. Thoughts on the future of focus options? That's an excellent question. Thank you very much for this. Um, before I get to that, I just see that Ankit upped his membership to Cinemascope. So thank you very much. You're a star. You're really helping this out. I encourage more people to do so. It's great. Uh, so back to the question. Focusers, we have a few options. We have Poli, I don't know if that's how you say it. We have Rapido, FVDs, 16A, 16B, and 35A. We have the Rectolux, Hardcore DNA, and the Rangefinder. The Rangefinder is always pretty cheap. I'm looking at B&H photo now, uh, just to see how much it is right now because it was discounted recently. Yeah, it's still there. Let's see if I can share a link for this. So it's at 249 bucks at B and H. And that's not a bad deal for that if you just want the ability of racking focus. Uh, a couple live streams ago, we talked to Lucas Pfaff and he mentioned the focus, which is a DIY focus. Uh, variable diopter focus solution and I'm working on it. I have a bunch of like 3D printed parts here, a bunch of them. <laughs> and I also have the wide angle adapter that he's using, which is the Fujinon WCV 82 SC. So I have that here. Plus I got an insight from Chase McCaffrey on Instagram. Thank you, Chase, on how to build an even cheaper focuser. Uh, which is also being built into an episode for this channel. So subscribe now if you haven't yet. Like the video, please. 70 people watching, 25 likes, not really cool. Uh, but there's, I'm working on providing you guys with more options, even cheaper than what manufacturers are doing. 
so you can also like get in the vibe that you're really building your setup it's, it's fun uh so i hope that helped uh andrea felipe got an ak16 f for 50 bucks that's definitely a steal i know a friend of mine from vancouver uh has a saved search on Craigslist, which is also a great place to look if you're in a big town like a LA or New York. Uh, you can find some anamorphic deals there. He has a saved search for scopes at a hundred bucks tops, and he's gonna buy those lenses and figure out if they're worth keeping or reselling. So uh, there's there's deals to be found. Um, Prismism is talking about how there's nothing on the anamorphic encyclopedia for proscar lenses uh, thoughts on the encyclopedia that's a project that i'm trying to upgrade but i'm trying to figure out a budget that i can put into it and make it more accessible than a google docs folder make it into a website that you can navigate and compare lenses and find the information that you need really quickly so if you're interested in that also join the channel or make a donation uh, the super chats on this uh live stream are activated so you can make donations through that and that helps a great deal in financing future future episodes and future plans um thoughts on proscar lenses they're pretty good there's a lot of bad footage on them online or like not bad but poorly performing and that's because a deal from buying lenses from ebay is these lenses have been kicking around for a while so they are not always in their best shape they need some fine tuning they have to be serviced they have to be cleaned and there's no real like not a standard place that you can send your lens and get that done for cheap because it's a very specialized job there's no lens tech that's going to do that for cheap or fast so i'm also working on more videos on how to tune your scope uh, once we get the time to do that. I'm really falling behind uh, on the chat. There we go. Benzen01, hello from MN. Where's MN? Uh, give me a hint. Hello from BC. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad that you're here. Mr. Sean, I've made, I've got an immaculate baby Isco with red sand clamp. Can I use this on the Bolex H16 Rex5 camera? And what lens would you recommend if pos if this is possible? I got to look up the Bolex H16, but that's not really what we're trying to do on this stream. So send that question through the link in my description, uh, the one for asking questions. It's my website slash ask me. And you can send your question special like in depth questions there and i'll get back to you um all right sirui is really picking up the game and vazen is also doing that at a like a higher cost and a higher tier like stronger squeeze so those are brands that are really pushing the boundaries of anamorphic on a budget and i'm i'm a fan um Bejoy Sanjeev, are Isco Ultra Star Cinemascope Anamorphics any good? I got one, couldn't figure it out, and now I put it up on eBay, just having second thoughts if to sell. Yes, Isco Ultra Star are great anamorphic adapters. They're great starter lenses. They give you sharp images. They have little flares most of the time, but they're good lenses. So if you're thinking of selling it for cheap, this episode might be the one. Otherwise, they're good lens. Um, that's the deal. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm glad that I answered your question, William. Let's see. Lucas, I am glad to hear that I'm the reason for your anamorphic interests. I'm glad that you're here. Join the channel. Well, I already see I got dislikes. If you're disliking this video, please let me know why. Uh, I just want to know what's going on trying to figure out how to do this better so uh, thanks let's go continue on this uh, adventure of looking at lenses and then i'll catch up on the chat again let's go um so we're looking here there's a bunch of anamorphics 
on eBay. I'm going to try to take out the flare keyword and see how much less. So we lost like 40 results here. Uh, I'm also going to take out the word Boca. And I'm also going to take out the word phone. Okay. So we shaved off like almost 200 results from there. Uh, there's still a few like small things. Uh, this Gellius442 says anamorphic clearly is not anamorphic. Uh, Schneider. Wide angle Cinelux 2X. There's this one thing about Schneider adapters. You can see this one. There's a bunch of different versions of the Cinelux. And this is one of them. One of those versions is really good. That's the one that I think I reviewed on the channel. It's the one with no front lip. It's just like a tiny block. It has a big rear glass. This has a huge rear glass. Yes, look at that. But it's also a giant scope. If you look in scale, these are 15 mil rails and this is way bigger than the camera and bigger than the taking lens. And the focus throw is huge. Like you got marks at 150 meters. I don't know if you really need those marks. Um, so these get mixed up a lot and people buy these lenses for... Um, thinking they're buying different lenses. That's an issue. So always try to get extra clear on what's the lens that you're looking at. If it's Schneider, a Cinelux, which model specifically? Like this is the WA for, I guess, wide angle. But the other one is called ES, and there's a Super ES. Uh, so just do some research. The Lens Cyclopedia covers some of that. It could be better. And there's videos on this channel. So just go through previous videos, and you're going to find information there. Uh, I see my dad saying hello in the chat. So, hey! <laughs> um, I would say 650 bucks for this is no go. Uh, maybe 200, honestly. Such a giant scope, you're going to spend so much time rigging it up. You know, I know Ulanzi doesn't make proper adapters, just small sensor phones, so I'm going to take them out from the search, and that also takes off about 100 results. So we're refining and getting closer to what we want to buy, I guess. So here's another Isco Schneider lens. And look at the size. Look at this person's hand for scale. And this is also a huge lens. Giant. Very heavy. I would not pay 550 bucks on it. Uh, minimum focus is super rough. And you're going to have a hard time working this on set. Plus, a lot of these big scopes have... Oh, great example here. Look at all this wasted space between the front of the glass and the front of the lens. All of this adds to vignetting if you decide to add a single focus solution to it. So uh, try to avoid lenses that have too much of a recessed front optic. I wouldn't buy this. You know what? I can also take moment out of this search. And uh, well, that wasn't much, just, just 20 results. So now we're finding different. So this is the Schneider that I was talking about. Uh, this is the one without the lip. You can see here, it's a flat front. I see some purple-ish highlights, which could hint at purplish, bluish flares. This lens is perfect for single focus solutions and not dual focus solutions, uh, double focus setups because you would just focus by turning, where's that tiny screw, first photo? Yeah, focus is right here. So you would just focus by turning this screw, not something you can do while shooting. Um, so 
you set this to infinity and you throw on a single focus solution on it, you're going to be good. 450 is not really cheap. Uh, for me, it's got a lot of shipping costs and it's coming from Russia. So I don't know. Shipping from Russia sometimes makes me antsy, especially if it's something more than 100 or 200 bucks. Uh, take that into consideration. Maybe make them an offer. This is the good model of the Cinelux. If you, so here, yes, Cinelux, if you need some reference. Um, moving on, another different, so this is the same one as I showed before, not a great one. Uh, let's catch up on this conversation. Let's see what's going on. A lot of people, oh, MN is Minnesota. So I learned that. Hi to Minnesota. Uh, people signing up for the encyclopedia. Whoa, this chat is going way too wild. Uh, I'm far behind. Okay. Do I have any idea? Uh, so Jordy is asking, do I have any idea when you'll get to test the C2E 35 mil? Uh, going into Indiegogo. If you're really curious, this, what you're seeing right now is the Siri 35 mil. I've been playing with it for a little while and uh, the review is coming out as soon as they announce the lens officially, like as soon as they start the campaign. It's, I, I can't say when, but I know it's not too far. So if you want to know more about Siri, subscribe. There's going to be a lot about it. Um, so there's that. I hope that answers. Um, search for KO 140 on eBay. There's a nice gem to get. Uh, I'm going to bite. <laughs> Not really believing in there, but let's see what's here. Uh, these are spherical projection lenses. And uh, I don't know. Not really what I'm going for now. They're cheap. And they're long, 140 mil. I'm gonna pass it for now, maybe later. I'm still working out a few other lenses to make work with my cameras. Um, oh, there you go, Navi expanded on. It's an epic lens that is very unique. I have it here and I love it. 140 mil is kind of long, man. Uh, maybe, maybe later, we'll see. Um, uh, Lucas is asking if I ever used the Bell and Howell two times. Trick question. There's easily three or four different Bell and Howells two times. There's the Kawa for Bell and Howell, which is the hyped one that I'm sure that we look up Koa, Bell, and Howell. On eBay, we're going to find at least one. What the? Okay. It's like, this is too good of a deal. Uh, 670 bucks on a Koa Bell and Howell. It's very cheap for today's standards, and the reason is there's separation on the rear element. You can see it very clearly here on the right bottom, and there's a lot of scratching. This will affect performance. Separation will affect performance. So if the seller's like, it doesn't affect performance, or I don't have samples, uh, it's a hard pass for me. If you're really committed and you really want to get a deal and you're like, I'll figure this out later or I'll deal with the consequences, this seems like a good seller. I thought he would have photos taken with the lens to illustrate uh, issues. Oh, here, there's a link to sample on the description so you can check that and see if it works for you. But on average, the Koa b and sells for a lot more. There's one for bidding here, and it's already at 840 bucks with two hours to go. Look at that. Uh, I've, I'm seeing them sell for, what, uh, 1200 1300 It's a lot more. Uh, a lot more expensive. While the other Bell & Howells sell for a third of that price. I've used almost all of the... Bell and Howell two times. Uh, Fernando is asking if I ever tried poorly. I'm also interested on them. I also don't have a budget to try one of their lenses. So I have to find someone who has a contact with them to see if they want to send a demo unit that we can play with in the channel. Uh, I would love to try it out and see what goes. 
and 91 people watching that's really cool i'm really excited guys <laughs> um Catlist, I've never been able to find a Rectalux for sale, but I'm happy with the FVD16A for now. I have a mixed opinion about the Rectalux. I think it's a great piece of gear, but when you put in the comparison between the price and the performance for the Rectalux and the FVD, I would choose the FVD, like in a blink of an eye. It's half the price. It's the channels on a budget is kind of the thing. <laughs> Uh, they don't show up very often, at least not on eBay, maybe more on the Facebook group. So Anamorphic Shooters Facebook group, if you're not in it yet. All right. Let's see. Trevor is answering about, I love that you guys are answering each other's questions in the chat. This is what I love about this group. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, let's see what else. Uh, da -da -da -da. There you go. Oh, Roman's here from Retro Photo House. Hey, Roman. How's it going? Uh, glad that you joined. Uh, your stuff showed up already, and I used one of your lenses in the last live stream. So let's see here. Navi is saying that uh, he wish I would make an anamorphic gallias with glitter on the inside. Um, not going to lie, I have done this before <laughs> it was when i was in japan uh for a project that's probably coming up soon and i can try that again yes the gallios is cheap enough we can find one and, and try it out maybe i'll give that away i don't know who would want it but uh <laughs> yeah sure we can do that Ta -da -da. yes uh ebay shows your listings uh <laughs> roman <laughs> Uh, people excited for the Lens Cyclopedia, I don't know, join memberships, uh, make a, a donation on this chat. Just help me fund this project. I got to hire a web designer. Or if you're a web designer or web developer, get in touch, send me an email and we'll figure it out. I have like a prototype. Here's the deal. I'll show you the prototype right now and we'll go back to that. <laughs> All right. Encyclopedia V3, I think. Oh, it's broken here. Great. Well, um, how am I going to do that? Will this work? Fuck. Oh, no. I swore. I reloaded a page that I didn't mean to. Sorry, guys. Um, is the search broken? Oh, no. How do I get there? Is the V2 fine? You can probably see the address on the... No, the V2 is definitely not fine. Wow, all of the links are broken. Amazing. Here. So this is a rough... This is like the first, first version where there's no navigation. There's nothing in here. But every time you refresh this page, you get a different thing. I've converted all the info from the Google Docs with the help of a bunch of people and I put them on in here and I want to make this more accessible. So if you just access, where's the, uh, no, link that I'm putting on the chat now, you can see the current version of the Lencyclopedia. The design needs a lot of improvement. That's it. That's why I'm not like making it completely available. Uh, so Encyclopedia, that's it. Where am I now? Uh, Encyclopedia. Da -da 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 -da. Hi from DC. Hey Nick. Hi from BC. Very close. Um, my dad's here. I already said hi to him. Uh, Victor is asking about Vormax lens. Uh, we'll get to that. Let me open a tab here and search for Vormax, and we'll get to that in a second. I guess I get a search for Max lens. Otherwise, who knows who's going to be here I'm watching an ad for my own video. Um, I will ignore the dislikes. Uh, what I'm curious is why the dislike, like there's something bothering you. So what is bothering you so I can improve and work on it? Uh, Catlis is saying remove the Gellius keyword. That's not a bad idea. So I'm removing that. No, 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 no. 
So Mankind Film just listed their SLR Magic 40, so it's there. There you go, your plug's there. What happened? Well, Ariana just yelled my name. I don't know what's going on. Um, uh, Roman is asking, what is the sharpest setup? Taking lens, anamorphic adapter, and diopters for full frame, mirrorless, Sony. There's a lot of variables there. I'm making some content to address that. I'm making way more focused content onto uh, building your own setup. So if you're interested, subscribe. <laughs> Okay, -na 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 -na. so there we go. My mom is also in the chat. Hey mom, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day. I'm definitely having a blast here. My mom did a live stream the other day. It was so much fun. She got way more people than I do here. So we got to 100 today. I got almost there. She got, I don't know, 150. So goals. <laughs> um, Okay, I see Michael is here. Michael Delapola, how's it going, Michael? And how big front element of the lens can I use with Cine Lux? The idea is you always want the front element of your taking lens to be smaller than the rear element of your anamorphic. So you don't introduce a mechanical vignetting. That's a thing also to be covered in another video. See how all of these things spiral into endless videos? Uh, definitely subscribe, definitely join. Uh, always aim for a smaller front than the rear of your anamorphic. Uh, Luke is asking if I have ever anamorphic an Indistar 28 or 50. I have not tried. Should be possible, don't see why not. Uh, let's add that to the list. I'm actually writing that. Indistar 28 or 50, okay. Uh, Jackie Chung is asking about the, oh, I see what you did there, about the review of the FVD 35A. I have not even started. I have the 35A here, but I'm, there's so much to do, man. And not, there's not enough time. <laughs> um, if any of you guys are editors and you're interested in helping out this channel, also get in touch. Uh, there's a lot to do. <laughs> um, Thanks, Pete. I'm glad that you joined uh, the channel. I also got your message that the giveaway lens arrived and that you're having fun with it. I was a little concerned about the shipping times, but it made it. Whee! That's a success on our first giveaway. It went live. Uh, Ariana is watching my live, uh, my girlfriend, and she said it's amazing. Thank you. Uh, Panasonic. Uh, Vidatlant. Hey, Eddie from Vidatlant. Vid Atlantic is here. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Uh, I hope that's Eddie. I'm glad that you're joining. Uh, oh, guys, I can't keep up with all the questions. Uh, best single focus solutions. I made a video about that. Then I made another video about that. If you just look up Rapido FVD versus Rectilux, you can probably find something from me that clarifies that question. Uh, Dustin is asking, trying to get more educated on old anamorphic glass. Found my channel. I haven't been around long, but glad that you live stream. Yes, we just started that. Thank Blake. He's in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> okay. Any of these Lomo square fronts seem too good to you? Yes. We're going to look into the Lomos. So I got Vormax and I got Lomos to talk about. Uh-huh. Ecamcito is saying hi from Spain. Hi from Canada. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that we have this international audience. And uh, did I catch up with the chat? No, I did not. Okay, guys, I'm going to go back to the eBay and uh, otherwise I'll be talking here forever. So we are looking, I took out the Gellius keyword from our search that also refined things a bit and we're all at 550 results. There's a Rapido package right here at the top. Uh, I don't think this includes an anamorphic lens inside. Let's see. No, it doesn't. This is just for the FVD and all of the support gear. So you still have to provide your own anamorphic glass for this. Um, good price. I wouldn't say it's cheap, but it's a fair price. And then we get to projects like this. This is what I wanted to show. I love this listing. I have this listing saved to talk about it for so long. 
Um, as I said, these lenses are a project in itself. And as you can see, this person rigged it up with pieces of wood. You can see the floating camera back here. Not sure if I would do that. And here's the size of the lens. So as I was talking about these lenses, uh, if you really like DIY and if you really like challenges, your goal is not really shoot anamorphic, but conquer a challenge, maybe go for this. Otherwise, I would say if you want to just get into shooting, skip big projection scopes. A few of them, great performers, not so great for rigging. Uh, so we got Vidalantic's clamp here, which is cheaper than ever. And then we get into more things. Elmoscope. This is actually cheap. Um, let's see if there's a, something wrong with it. Um, so this is an Elmoscope 16, you can see. And it, that's different from the traditional Elmoscope 2 or Elmoscope 1. They're all different lenses. And this is the smallest one of them. Uh, so this would vignette, vignette a lot faster than the Elmo 2. You can see a little bit of scratching here, a little bit on the front as well. There's no, oh yeah, there's a clear shot down the barrel, but there's no light shining through. So you can't see if there's fungus or anything very clearly. This lens is fairly cheap and it comes from the United Arab Emirates. So if you're somewhere closer, that's, uh, that might be a good, good find. Um, Let's see if the listing says something. This is perfectly working with ultra micro. So eBay sellers try to downplay the issues. Ultra micro two or three cleaning marks on the front element does not affect picture at all. 100% perfect. The rear lens is clean. But once you go to the rear lens, you can see it's not clean, dude. Why do you do that? Why do you say it's clean when it's not? And if you say there's no effect on sample pic on pictures, you should at least provide a sample picture. Um, so that irks me about this listing. Uh, I see Trevor joined the channel as a member. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, that helps a lot. Uh, more people should join. I'm going to just keep going at it. Okay, so you find this Elmo scope and then I see a molar here. So I'm going to, I'm just curious about this. Let's see what's up. This is a molar anamorpha 32 slash two times. And see the seller is being more forthcoming with lots of cleaning marks and a big scratch and a chip on the rear that I didn't, uh, didn't what? That I did, that didn't show up in the images when I did a test shot. Same for chip on the edge of the front. Um, some marks on the coating focus ring is smooth. At least that. Um, he provides test shots and warns about issues with shipping. Um, I like how forthcoming the seller is being about the condition of the lens and he provides actual test shots uh, with lights in them. What's going on on this? Okay. I find it a little pricey. These lenses are not going for super cheap these days anymore. We'll get to a trap about these molars, but you have the option of making an offer. So maybe you can get something good out of this. Uh, also important thing, the seller's in Europe and he has good feedback. Avoid people with very little feedback. If you can also check if the seller has other items and if they are related to what they're selling. So this guy has nothing else. Uh, I'm gonna cheat out onto a different listing here, just so I can illustrate something about the molar, which is this one. There's another molar. You can see that this, the coatings are much better. These scratches are tiny, uh, a little bit on the back as well. But the most important thing is to notice this back. Notice how this element is recessed, like the rear glass compared to this one. You see how this one is like right at the edge and the other one has a gap. You can also notice that this lens has focus marks on the barrel. Give me a side view focus marks on the barrel here. 
And the other one does not have focus marks on the barrel. So the one with the recessed rear element and no focus marks is a telecine version of the lens. This lens cannot reach infinity, but it's marked exactly with the same name as the one that does. So these are tiny things that you have to be aware of when you're buying these lenses. I know there's another Telecine version for really cheap um, going on. Where's that? No, go to, oh God. For really cheap going on. That is also the Telecine version. So let's see if I can quickly find it so I can point it and you do not buy this unless you also want a project. Um, Here's the Koa 16H, which is on par with the Elmo 2 or the B&H, uh, which is the highest tier of Koa projection lens. And you can see it's listed at 1500 bucks. I think it's a bit excessive. Um, where's here? This molar. 400 bucks, and you're like, wow, this is so cheap. Clean glass, amazing purple flares. And then you get to the back of it and you see there's no focus marks and the rear element is recessed. So that's a no, skip those. I'm gonna try to talk about Vormax. We are, time flies when you're live streaming on eBay, I guess. So Vormax lens, let's see this. These are very cheap anamorphics. Um, Maxim is in Ukraine, I think or in Russia, actually it says Russian Federation right here. I had, I have tested some stuff from him. I have tested his streak flare filter for the anamorphic kit guide. You can get in my shop. And I really like the results. It gives a result that no other uh, flare filter does. And I've heard good results from people using his diopters. I very, very briefly tested, uh, I think it was one of these 1.3s when I was in Europe last year and I was underwhelmed. I know he kept working on them and he's developing new products and modified versions of these lenses. So they're probably getting better, but I have to talk to him and try them out. The last experience I had with this cheapest one was not impressive in the sense that I wouldn't shoot with it. The other ones, I can't speak much about them. Um, let's see if he has test shots. He has different stretch factors, which is pretty cool. Um, gotta say, I like how these, uh, flash rings look in here just for fun. And I wish he had test shots on, on this stuff. Does he? Back order. Uh, no test shots. So that's, uh, that's Vormax. And then let's see what we got for Panasonic LA7200, just to streamline this look. 950 and 900 bucks. Um, if I find a cheap one, I'm buying before all of you guys. Don't even try me. <laughs> uh, oh no, this is just a side thing. Okay. So 950 bucks for a penny is not bad. Uh, this one comes with, there's also different versions of them. Notice how this has no front lip here around the, the front of the lens. And this one does. I've modified the one with the lip to take filters and diopters. Um, the one without the lip is a different process, but it's also cheaper and you can make an offer. Uh, it's in the States. The seller has some reputation. It doesn't look like it's a random person. So these are not cheap. It's hard, like I would say this lens is cheap when it's for $500 and I've found them for $500 before. So it's not impossible, but 900 bucks is also better than the usual 1150, 1200 that they get for. Um, I find it to be an interesting lens. It's great if you want to go really wide on full frame for distant shots, no close-ups. Otherwise, I would just go with Sirui. Uh, yes, because it's similar character. Sirui has got all the mechanics down so you can focus. And it has filter threads, so it takes filters.
So that's that. And we had Lomo Anamorphic. It's going to be wild with these guys. Uh, these NAPs. So here's a Cine set of two lenses. That's not the only one because I know I've seen others. Let's put the price minimum a thousand just to filter out everything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a set of round fronts at 60,000. I don't know. I don't feel okay by buying as if I could buy a $60,000 thing. Uh, putting $60,000 through eBay. Uh, I wouldn't just order a $60,000 thing and expect it to be delivered at my house without seeing the seller and talking to them and maybe even meeting them in person. Now is not the best time to travel and get to see things in person, but uh, it's a thing. There's a few other Lomos here. Uh, wow. $8,000 on this weird looking CKBK. So CKBK is the prototype factory for Lomo. And they made both anamorphics and sphericals. This is a really trippy lens. They only got this one photo, really? No. They got other photos in the listing. Um, I don't know the mount. I don't know how this works. It's probably Oct9, OCT19, it looks. I don't know what the barrels on the side do, but I'm fairly curious. You can see some smudges on the glass and not going to lie, $8,000 is not bad for this. Um, still wouldn't buy it. When I was doing my Lomo purchases, I was trying to find lenses for less than $4,000 and that was almost impossible. Uh, but it took me a year and a half to get something. And it's hard to find them for less than 10 grand. If you do find something for less than 10,000, um, I would say look into the seller. All of these seem legit. They don't look too off. I don't think we got any scams going on right now. Uh, new old stock. So this is a little bit fishy. I. Hmm. I don't know. Lower uh, reputation and no PO box. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a bit skeptical of this. And it's only one front for two lenses. Not really a good deal. Okay. Uh, it's hard to find long monomorphics on eBay. It's really hard to find. Let's see. If I can catch up on this chat now. Uh, Wasim, thanks for the videos, they help. Uh, the question is, how can I adapt? Okay, the Lomo NAP. Um, I covered it a bunch in this live stream. I don't recommend it. So that's what I have to say about it. Uh, Salem, Salim, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, hi, Tito, what will be the most possible lightweight setup for a full frame sensor? so many options can't cover it it depends on the camera that you're using your style of shooting uh subscribe to the channel and you you get more of that uh but uh yeah it's hard russell is saying that he has a couple anamorphics for sale on ebay from uk at the moment so maybe go check Russell, Russell's store. Russell, I don't know if you want me to do that. Otherwise, I might be looking at your prices and being critical of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do I think about NAP? Ignaz uh, talked about NAP a bunch. Uh, Jonte, hello, Tito. Hope all is well. Am I late or have you not started the eBay hunting? I have started the eBay hunting is ongoing. I'm not trying to find any specific deals, but just looking at what's there. Uh, 867 mil front diameter for the taking lens is okay, or is it too much? Um, it depends on the, the rear size of your anamorphic. Like the size of the filter thread doesn't matter as much <clears throat> as the size of the glass itself. 
So uh, look for the size of the glass. And that's what I have to say. Um, William is asking if I ever shot a review on raw shooting with a C-mount lens on the EOS, EOS M. I have not. I haven't shot with a Canon camera in a very long time. I don't think it's going to change. <laughs> Maybe film. Um, Trevor is helping me giving answers here. Uh, thank you, Dave, for giving a like to make up for the dislikes. If everybody could be like Dave, that would be great. Um, Russell has a Sankara and an Escrimore font for sale, so maybe we'll jump on that. Uh, Framed is asking what I think of Selma's Apollo. They have too small of a sample. There's like two sets in the world, I think. Uh, if you look up Max Swan's review of it, it's pretty thorough. It's very good. I wish that review was on this channel. Max, do you want to join us? Uh, cool. Um, just That review is pretty comprehensive. I haven't tried the Zelma's Apollo yet. Um, okay. Andre is asking recommendations for single focus solutions for 8 mil scopes. Uh, there's, a, there's an FVD8 that you can check out from Rapido. And Nick is asking if I have recommendations for making the focus wheel on a vintage lens more uh, smoother. You can always disassemble it and re-grease it, which is challenge it can be very tough um i haven't done much of that or you can send it to a lens tech to do that depending on how expensive your lens is it might be a good idea uh, how long is this chat guys <laughs> dustin is an editor but he doesn't have time well dustin thank you for volunteering that information um okay uchujin uh send me an email thank you uh and kid i have your email so we'll talk about that um hello to iceland matthias and my views on soviet lomo anamorphic 80 to 200 that's the lomo nap i would say avoid it um there's a lot of people interested in those i should make a video on just like how to avoid that lens yeah maybe i'll write that uh, da -da -da, Bolex, double focus. I covered the price on the LA7200. For Max, people are answering each other's questions. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Vazen, I'm hopefully going to be working with Vazen again soon. So stay tuned, subscribe, and you're going to get that. Uh, Russell, if you want to send the link to your listings, I'm glad to put them up here and take a look. Uh, Steve is asking, what is a good taking lens that has zoom? I was thinking of the Tokina 28 to 70, uh, which is a classic engine you design and it's all internal zoom and focus as well being part focal. The big issue on that lens is the focus throw is like this big. It's so, so tight. So if you're operating on a double focus setup or if you're not locking infinity, uh, it's a little tough to work with. You're also like at 28, there's not a lot of lenses, adapters that are compatible with that focal length for full frame. So you're limited to smaller sensors, Super 35, which is not a bad deal. And I've paired the LA7200 to a 24-70, or I used to do that back in the day when I had those lenses. And it worked great. It was limited when it came to like longer focal lengths because of how the LA7200 is optimized and focus limitations. All right. Uh, Lucas saying he does motion graphics and visual effects. Oh, I definitely need that. Uh, send me an email. If you can't find my email, leave a comment after the stream and I'll get in touch with you. I'm looking for people who can help this channel grow. So if you are like, I don't have money to put into this, but I have some time, I'm accepting time donations as well. <laughs> uh, hey, Ian, I'm glad that you joined us here. And um, uh, uh, the weekly online, I would love to know your name so I can call you by your name. Uh, how long do I need the Siri MFT for my project? You, uh, you have one. I don't know exactly. I have the project is to 
kind of adapted into different mounts and the MFT version is the most suitable one, but it involves some designing and CNCing. I, I was working this with someone and I might just like get back to them and try to move things through. Um, but I don't know yet. I might just want to like have one of my own so I can, when I finish the project, I can use it on the Panasonic and the Sony if I don't ditch the Sony. Um, I think I caught up on the chat. Oh my God, I did. Lucas, thanks for sending your email. I'm not going to make it public. I'm going to copy it. <laughs> uh, Timur is asking, what do I think about Sumilux R3515-80 with latex adapter for the Blackmagic? I don't, I think the 35 might be a good taking lens. Uh, I have not had a ton of experience with Leica's. I love the character. I think it goes really well with anamorphic. It makes for a really nice organic texture. Um, and some other lenses lack might be a good fit it's also expensive uh, <laughs> so uh jonathan is saying i never talked about the sharp yet characteristic sancor 16f before i have not talked about a lot of smaller scopes the 16f is going to be pretty similar to the koa 16d so if you want to look up that video that's a good reference for um uh, reference base for that and yeah the it's going uh ks is commenting and people watching and thumbs up um it's going uh, okay so you're robert good to know robert i gotta write that down uh andre is asking about ef mount for vazen i have not heard of that so don't know um, um, is there anything you guys want to see on eBay now? I realize we just hit an hour on this and there's way more questions than I expected. So we're probably going to do this again very soon. Uh, <laughs> I am glad to see this is a format that works and that you guys enjoy it. I feel I covered a lot of ground on lenses in general and characteristics of specific scenarios answered a lot of questions, didn't go as much into eBay as I thought I would, which is funny. I taught how to filter results, so maybe you can get something from there. And uh, But a couple people joined the channel, uh, which is great. I'm really happy that you guys did that. Thank you so much. Uh, we also talked about the Encyclopedia, so that was a thing. And uh, on how to grow this channel and make it better for you guys. So I'm glad there's uh, excited people willing to volunteer their time and work with me and Blake uh, as we're trying to make this happen. Um, okay. I got lots of people volunteering information. Nice. Thank you, um, Brandon. Who else? Uh, the Able Fables. Uh, are there any Sigma vintage lenses which are super sharp or suitable for anamorphics? Sigma really changed their game recently. So their older stuff is really subpar. There's no other word. I would avoid vintage Sigma. Um, I hope that answers it. Um, Trevor is asking why is the Bolex Muller 1632 so hard to find? It is pretty good. There's not that many around. People that get that lens usually don't sell it. They keep it as like, oh, this is the lens that I'm going to use for my work. I'm done. I'm settling with this one. This is the one. So they like marry that lens. While two times adapters change a lot. Um, 1.5 squeeze has a lot of versatility. It's a, just a great lens overall. And it's kind of hyped. Like the Koa 16, Age, 8Z, Elmo 2, Koa and Age. Uh, a lot of hype around those lenses so they just get rare um uh, steve uh talking to someone else uh dustin's asking what do i need help with besides editing honestly i'm trying to finance things like i'm doing this out of my free time and during covid i got lots of free time because all set work has been cancelled uh, I just got invited to maybe DP a feature in the coming weeks. So that's going to be a first. It's going to be very exciting. 
I don't know how that's going to work with the channel and all this live streaming because um, <laughs> I'm probably going to have to sign an NDA for that. Um, but I need subjects for videos. I need help with a lot of editing, motion graphics. If somebody is like a social media expert, I'm trying to like grow the channel because Anamorphic is getting very popular and there's no one on YouTube doing that. So like the reason I started this is because when I got into Anamorphics, there was no information to be found. Mm -hmm. So I made some rules. If you look up my very first video, Blake was just talking about it. It's like, I don't care at all about the look of the project or what I'm saying. It's like my only 10 minute video before last year. Um, and it's just like, I'm going to review these lenses and you do whatever you want, man. I'm just doing what I want. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm trying to like make anamorphic accessible. If I wanted to steal someone's mission, it's Atlas mission, which is anamorphic for all. But theirs is anamorphic for all at $8,000. And this is anamorphic for all at $5 or real anamorphic on a budget. So that's the deal. If you have ideas on how to save money or like if you have uh, funds you want to contribute to the channel, it helps a great deal because this does not pay my bills. Honestly speaking, this does not get close to paying my bills. <laughs> so if I want to put as much effort into this as I w can, I need to find a way to be stable and pay rent because I don't live here for free. I wish this was my house. <laughs> uh, the chat spiked up again. Uh, Thanks for letting me know I said your name night, right, Salim? Um, okay. Uh, if you want to share the videos or like I'm making more videos on starting about the history of Anamorphic and how they work and less focused on the gear itself, so more historical and context videos. So help sharing videos and increasing the audience of the channel. That helps a great deal. And I'm very, very thankful for you guys for doing that. Uh, just engaging, answering people's questions, pointing them to the channel. Uh, that helps a great deal. Uh, Tyler is asking recommendations for the Isco Ultra Star for taking lenses. If you're shooting full frame, anything north of 85 mil should be good. Um, Jupiter 9 is a cheap one. There's Nikkor, there's um, what else? Contax 85 to 8, which is a good one. Um, Alex Sonrich is asking, what do I think about Siri 50 and 35 mil? I have tried them. You can find reviews and mod guides for the 50 mil on the previous videos. You can get those. The 35 is what we're using right now. And there's a review for it coming soon. Um, Irish favor you. Uh, Got a molar 63 slash two. Um, Asking if he can rehouse it, he can def you can definitely rehouse it. It's going to take a lot of time and effort. Same situation as the Lomo NA piece. Um, uh, Robert's asking if I would use a Panasonic LA7200 in front of a Parfocus Cine Zoom lens. Um, yes and no. Like As soon as you hit the longer end, the, the Panny's image just crashes. So there's a caveat there. Uh, Babs Do Productions is talking about the mechanical apertures that I kind of mentioned in the beginning, but didn't go into depth. So, uh, just something Dustin also can help with, uh, motion graphics. Thank you, Dustin. I'm going to get in touch. And, um, I think that's it. I think we're getting on a loop. Uh, Steve Holt, zoom taking lenses, the Tokina or Engine U 2870 that was mentioned before is a good one. Uh, Sigma 18 to 35 is kind of wide. Don't know. Maybe try that. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you, Sunny. Uh, I'm I'm looking for contacts and people who want to join this uh, this thing. Like, let's make this a community. It is kind of. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, Twelve ten. It's been an hour and ten minutes. I think we should wrap up. I definitely need to drink some water. Didn't expect to talk this much. Didn't show eBay that much. We're going to do another one. I'll see you next week. Uh, what day is next week? I think I have to interview someone next week. 
uh, we'll figure out uh, more closer to the date. And stay tuned for some new videos this weekend on Sunday. So uh, that's it. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't and consider joining. Uh, the, the entry price is $2.99. It's fairly cheap and it means a great deal for me and just like this project. It means that you believe in it and getting people to believe in it encourage me to do it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. I think that's it. Whee! Woo! Shit! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>